130B. Is that right? Yeah, that's about right. I'm sorry, 130C. Yeah. 130B. Did you make coffee today? This is our goal. <clears throat> you've already done this. That is to say, you've itemized each of Socrates' points. Mm -hmm. Now, Parmenides is going to respond. Mm -hmm. You're going to do the very same thing itemize each of the points that Parmenides makes in respect to what he believes to be Socrates' philosophy or basic view. You're then going to compare one to two. Now this way of reading we're going to go through every all the time. What's the comparison between this section and that section and why does he do what he does? Right? So, um, we, need a, we need a reader, don't we? Did I see a hand go up, Don? I'll do my best. Would you care to? Um, you know, I'm not very... Um, okay. well, then, you can pass the bucket. I won't pass the bucket. Okay. I'd rather give it to somebody that's more fluid. I'll try. It's going this way, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. With Osocrates, correct? Yes. Osocrates. Good beginning. Uh, <laughs> right? Everybody How there? How worthy of admiration is your Okay. Your Everyone there? Are you at 129A? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, 130B, it looks like. Oh, one thirty three, okay. That's where she's Now, uh, my friend Harry Zrovitovich did a whole PhD on the first word. Read it again. Okay. Oh Socrates. That's, enough. <laughs> That's the word he did a tall paper on. <laughs> Say it again. Oh Socrates. No, no, just Oh. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He showed its use in tragedies and in Plato. It's very profound. Two of my friends thought. I never read it. So go ahead. Okay. How worthy of admiration is your impulse in your pursuit of the Logos? And tell me, have you yourself thus separated certain ideas apart from selves? As you say, on the one hand, and in turn on the other hand, in the same way, set apart those that participate of these, 
And does there appear to you to be a certain likeness that is separate from self-likeness and indeed a certain one or unity and many or plurality and all other such particulars which we possess and of which you have just now heard of from Zeno? Mm -hmm. Or from Zeno? Mm -hmm. You could read slower. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I shall. I read very well. Okay, just do it again slower. Okay. O oh, Socrates, how worthy of admiration is your impulse in the pursuit of the Logos? And tell me, have you yourself thus separated certain ideas apart from selves, as you say, on the one hand, and in turn, on the other hand, in the same way, set apart those that participate of these? And does there appear to you to be a certain likeness? That is separate. Okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What point is he making? Mm -hmm. Right, what is he saying? Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. Part of it. What else do you find? Um, yeah. And set apart those things that participate in ideas. Depending on how far, where the word those goes. Mm -hmm. Agree? And likeness. likeness that is separated from self-likeness. We didn't get that. Although it's ambiguous what those and these refer to. Well, take, take as many possibilities as you can come up with. Certain ideas apart from themselves. Those, I guess, would be the certain ideas. And these would be the selves. So, is this what he's doing? Hmm. This Parmenides asking Socrates, say, 
have you separated these two? And have you also some of these ideas share in self? Or you can say some of the selves share in ideas, depending upon which way you want to go. Is that the first one? Do you want to make some changes? What does it look like? I don't see the first point that you're making there, that ideas are separate from selves. Yeah, I think ideas that's, are separated. That's that con concave. No, no. Yeah. I see it on the board. Uh -huh. I heard Pierre say it. I don't see it in the text. Oh. He says, until what do you do with separated certain ideas apart from selves? Is that the correct translation? Well, oh, see, I don't have that translation. I have you yourself thus separated apart certain idea selves. <laughs> so, oh, well, that's different. Don't worry about it. Anyone who wants to propose an alternate way, just come up and do what I do, sketch it out as you see it. That's all. How about the next phrase, and set apart those that participate of these? You don't have that? I have that, but that isn't about ideas and selves. That's about those that participate of them. Therefore, it presupposes that those that the participation is the key way in which these are linked together. That's symbolized uh -huh. in this way. True. Okay, Barbara or anyone else want to offer another alternative? Sir, back I've row. I've got Taylor's translation. It says... Okay, you're in the Thomas Taylor, right. and you're going to get a different reading. Right. That's it okay. Says, tell me, therefore... We can also you... sketch that out. Yeah, it says, tell me, therefore, have you separated, as you say, certain species apart by themselves, and likewise the participants of these species apart? And does there appear to you to be a certain similitude separate from that similitude which we possess and a certain one in many? So it sounds to me like we can say, it sounds like he's talking about monads separated from the unity, the monads being uh, then the things that participate of each of these monads. Intellect, soul, self. Just so taking the one and then that is and breaking it down, separating itself by first the species and then, the, then those things which participate so, in those species. Is it possible that you can picture it here? I'll give you the... Mind, the one is suspended from the one in mind, and many other things that, that have the hypoxis of hypostasis. Are you capturing the same paragraph that we're in? <laughs> You're curious about reading a different book yeah, altogether? In that first statement of Parmenides? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then so we'd have intellect, and then we'd have intellectibles. Good. good. And intellecting, Let's get which we suspend from here. So this would be the, the self. That's suspended from that is a species which is mind, and yeah. the things of mind, the intellect. And well, but we're staying with the text as best we can. So in the Thomas Tater, you have, tell me, therefore, have you separated, as you say, any certain species apart from themselves, and that's it. Yeah, this would be the self, the first species, mind, separated from the one. Well, this is, wait, this wait, is wait, the breaking wait. down of the Wait, 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 just staying there, though, certain species apart 
themselves, by themselves. Uh-huh. So we're just saying certain species. You're just going to talk about mind only. Wait, wait, wait. We're not. He doesn't use mind. No, but that's just be a species, right? And that's well, we I'm don't saying. know that. I know, but staying with his words. There could be many different things that could be that. No, it'd be certain species. So we're talking about what would species be. I'm saying mind being a species itself of, of the one. Well, that that's... But that's the highest level of, of mind. I, monad. It, there, you're, you're right on one level, but probably, but just staying with his words, it makes it difficult to believe you because we'll have to believe that that's what it is. So staying with his words, what do you do with, let's just say, certain ideas or certain species apart by themselves? Just taking that phrase, what right. do you so have? So ideas would fall down here. Okay, what, just... What you be now species of... Well, wait, wait, but you're leaving out something. It's by... I don't think them. I am, but this is the, it's separating it from itself, making, so making a distinction from itself as it participates of that. He talks about participation in the next part of the sentence. Okay, huh? just just read it again, because you're leaving two parts out. Okay. That's okay. Will you read it for me and point it out? There's species. It's not the same text. That's okay. I've got it. Certain species. Mm-hmm. So there's certain species. There's plural, and they are a, a part by themselves. And what are what's a species? Well. We can just say species. We'll call them ideas. There are certain ideas apart by themselves. That just that part. Is mind not? Kind We're of not taken using as, mind. I know, but that, as a species of the one, and then there are species of mind. Well, I, I see the connection. Okay, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just that it's not in the text. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Good point. Look here. What it means, what it means is one thing, but you first want to get down what he says. Then you can discuss what it means and put it in other terms. And this is good to do. This is trying to understand this, and Thomas Taylor, of course. And this is what he may mean by it, but we first have to make sure you get the content specifically, as Regina just remarked quite well. Okay, look here. Follow the same kind of logic and do the next one. Um, Now, now we have something else up here. Um, It's like he's following the same kind of thinking he's doing here in the first case, right? Has two items, two items separated one from the other, so he's using the same kind of thinking. And indeed, is there a certain, uh, we can say, a certain many and all other such particulars, right? Similar to this. It's parallel, you see, it's parallel. And, um, and is a and, and a many, right? And that's most important. Um, and all such particulars. Right. And these are what we possess. And presumably, this is a reference back to our friend, 
back to Zeno. Right? Is he putting likeness and many and one in the same category? Well, this is the first time he's identified with the idea of self with an idea, linking them together. On this level, it's participating. This is not participating because he's just making a distinction between these two. Mm -hmm. um, now, you might want to say it's parallel and therefore uh, you might want to say between these two there is participation, but he doesn't say that at this point. So, look here, my question to you is, does this represent what's in the text? Hmm. If not, you have to come up and uh, offer an alternative. Right. Here, I had a question. Right here. <clears throat> I was wondering if we can, um, in place of likeness and, and unlikeness, or un like and unlike, yeah. can we replace? Uh, Unchanging and changing in its place? Okay, so that's now how do we understand it? That's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, before we go there, would you agree that when he's talking about and, and uh, many mm -hmm. and all such particulars which we possess means all of these ideas must be in our everyday, our world. Mm -hmm. Equally well, it looks like uh, this likeness, see, um, there are different kinds of likeness. Look here. Since these are all participating in self, they share something. And any time any three things share in something, you can say they, there must be a likeness among them. Right? Okay, by the way, uh, you can also say there must be here self, self, self. Well, there must be a likeness or an identity between these three. So you can say that's another likeness or identity. You can also say, in our everyday world, there's a likeness among things. So there can also be a likeness among things. So, uh, these are different. They have different subjects. And you have to keep in mind which one you think, or he's using them indiscriminately, or he's using one over the other for some particular reason to make something clear. All right? Now, linking self with likeness means he's putting this idea of likeness up here with these. Therefore, we can say,
Now that's another kind of likeness. Linking ideas with self. Okay. Therefore, we can call this self-likeness as a result of that participation. Fair enough? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Want to read the next line? Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm eating. What next time you mean? Or it, it he has immortal lines and he's not reading. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it does to me indeed? Yes. Please? Again, please. It does to me indeed. Right. Therefore, it goes back to Papa Ar Parmenides. And how about the following one? Okay, now look here. We have to keep this in mind as we now construct another model. Now you do this one and we'll compare it. Go ahead. Robert, you can read it or any one of you? Do you want to continue? Okay. Is there a certain idea like that of justice eternally self by self and also of beauty? and of good, and all such ideas, by themselves? What, I, I think he's going to want to step there. Yes! <laughs> but <laughs> okay. you can read on it. Go ahead, continue. Oh, what next then? Is there also an idea of man, and of all the elements, such as we are composed of? Any certain ideal human self, and one of fire, and one of water, <coughs> that is separate from us? I have certainly often <coughs> been uh, doubtful, O Parmenides, concern, uh, blah, 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 blah. I've, often, I've certainly often been at a loss, O Parmenides, concerning whether it is necessary to speak of selves, just as we did about those ideas, or in another way. Right. All we need is, okay, how would you do the first paragraph? By that I mean, and how about the following one? How would you do that one? Come on. Saying, have you looked here? Is that what he's asking him? Yes. You have kind of an and especially, right? especially that a great English word. Uh, Etc. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so that presupposes there must be other ideas similar that can be linked up with the same idea of self. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Although they have to be self by self, right? Yes. Which to me suggests they're separate from each other. That's one way to read it anyway. No, that's that's what there is. Nothing is perfect. They have their own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean, self by self? Is that self according to self? Or is there like a monad and a henad level that this one is? Well, I think that's one of the <clears throat> mysteries about Greek is how do you translate such things? Recently, I was looking at according to and realized that in one way they're talking about conforming to and right and like is it as if self there's no part of justice that is not just as self it's self according to self self what do you want to call that self identified self manifested self it's definitely it sounds like it's self what's that word from Proclus no. yeah. when you're moving from according to to the word by uh-huh. That makes that distinction that you just made. Right. I didn't really do by, no. but so we can say self by self could be agent. No. At this point, it's suggesting from this reading that they're separate. But I was thinking it suggests that there's a higher level of justice that this conforms to. To a higher level. Right. Yes. A higher level of justice. But and there's a higher level of beauty. What? And, a, and there's a higher level of beauty. And a higher level of the good. Which would be self-justice. Self so these yes. are... Yes. Goody. What would be the highest I I one? What would, what would be the like highest that? one if they can be arranged Perfect. hierarchically? Yeah, Julie, go ahead. It seems like it would be infinite. It would just keep going. Well, then it, it ends up impossible to understand if it's an infinite series of mm -hmm. regression. So then don't even go there, you say? If you go for an infinite regress, then you can't make distinctions. You suggested this suggests a higher self, I mean a higher category. I said, good, what kind of category would be if it were to be not just high or higher, mm -hmm. but the highest? Your answer was, well, it's an infinite regress, but it doesn't answer the question. Hmm. Now, it I may, guess the see, self of all selves. No, see, it may be. One self. No, it may be that this addition makes it the highest. Oh. Possible. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you keep these as possibilities. All right, we go to the next one. Oh, okay. Hold it. Belinda, what did you say? So that is, oh, you did. Hi. <laughs> what did you say? Did you, did you overhear it, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're talking about the, um, the self-justice and the self-beauty and the self-good. And... Um, how they're go how they go together. How they go together. Yeah. Mm. So you're suggesting you see if these have the same prefix as it were, there's a way in which they must all be together. Yeah. And that's what you're suggesting. Hey, we'll put that one there. All right. Okay. We go further? Okay. Yeah, that may be a hierarchy, Julie. Yeah. I think I said yes. Okay. 
What next then? Wait a minute, we forgot. I said yes. 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 Socrates yes. is ready yes. to answer. Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay. What next then? Is there also an idea of man and of all the elements, such as we are composed of? and a certain ideal human self, and one of fire and one of water that is separate from us? Hmm. This is the proto-man. Right? This is a proto-man. This is the ideal Right. This is the ideal. This, is, this presumably, um, that from which all other people derive their existence. But, so therefore, it, it takes on an archetypal function. And he's saying, hey, uh, I'd like you to notice that uh, in that same class, do you also put in uh, elements or things that the body is composed of? And then, very nicely, he adds to that that this is an ideal Right? That's an ideal human. That's an ideal human self. And among the things in our body, there can be elements, and nicely enough, he adds water, fire, and water as one of the pair of elements. And those would be ideal fire and ideal water? As part of the ideal man? That's inherent in that. Okay. So another that, way of stating this, would this be a logos? Pardon? A logos of man? I didn't hear. Would that be a logos of man? Yes. That's another way of putting it. A model. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, from which all others can be derived in its most ideal and it incorporates therefore Therefore, we can put this in its place. They're connected. Right. So what does dear old Sock say? Wait, wait, uh, Pierre. <clears throat> that last self that you just drew, is that... Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I uh, forgot one most important part. Um, Separate from us. Ideal humans. Separate from us. Ideal humans are all And all of those are separate from us. Okay, does that grasp what's going on? Yes. Um, uh, well, I'm missing some, something here. This sentence divides itself into a, a, the first half and the second half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those two halves are, are not exactly the same, but very close. So otherwise it would look like a repeat to me except that in the second half he's adding self. Per perfectly, perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. An ideal. This can stand as a proto-man as well as an ideal self. So you can make another one right. like that. All right? And these accordingly would fit. Uh, uh, the first set would be things that the body is composed of that's different than the elements, and therefore on this level, on this level that you're suggesting, 
uh, elements, such as fire. Ah. And if you take that reading, then he's moving uh, from this idea to the ideal self, human ideal self, and unpacking things that the body is composed of into a sub another category, the elements, fire and water. That's perfectly legitimate. All right. Um, Socrates has a great line now. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Go right ahead. I have certainly often been in dire straits, doubtful and at a loss, O Parmenides, concerning these themselves, whether it is necessary to speak of these just as we did about those ideas, or in another way. That's great. What's his problem? We talk about him the same. You say, hey, you know what? Uh, go ahead, read it again. <clears throat> I have certainly often been in dire straits, doubtful and at a loss, O Parmenides, concerning these themselves, whether it is necessary to speak of these just as we did about those ideas, or in another way. See, look here, see what we got? And now we have, and now we have this, look here. They're different ideas of self. He's saying, hey, you know what? I don't know how, and if you can relate those ideas of self to these ideas. Does that mean he's trying to place them in the same class or just relate them? That's right. Either or? Either or, that's right. Okay. So he's looking at this and saying, yeah, I see how you're using language, but um, I'm kind of worried about the way in which you're mixing the idea of self with these ideas. Mm -hmm. Pierre, Please. I'd just like to add that if you look at the end of the prior paragraph, yeah. where it says, and a certain uh, ideal human self, the way the Greek looks, it looks as if it would be, um, could be made a little clearer by saying, there is an ideal self of man or fire, right? Or water, or also water. And right? therefore? They're all on the level in this statement of ideal self. That's right. And that's kind of a strange thing. Right. Therefore, with that, right. you'd want to then hook these in mm -hmm. with the idea of self. Right, exactly. Right. Idea right. self. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is weird. Yeah, that's right. And a good question. Yeah. Okay, good. Keep going. And are you also at a loss or puzzled about the following particulars of Socrates? whether it is necessary to affirm that there is a separate idea, form, or species of each one of these, which may also appear to be ridiculous, such as of hair and clay and dust, or of anything else which may also... Yeah, he says, hey, I got another question for you. What are you going to do with hair, mud, and dirt? <laughs> you think you have problems with the elements. You think you have problems with man. You know, not haven't seen nothing yet. Yeah, we're going to fit that into what you've been doing. Go ahead. Or of anything else which may also appear to be quite without honor and most worthless by being other in turn of those particulars which with, with which we are familiar or whether it is not necessary? Yeah. What does he want to know? whether we need to do the same thing with hair, mud, and dirt as we did with 
by a... And all of these ideas. these ideas. Any one of them. Yeah. Could yeah. you call, no. could you say hair cell, mud cell, dirt cell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Keep going. On the one hand, I do not affirm that these exist in any other way from these we have, we, which we certainly also see. Whereas on the other hand, is it not the height of absurdity insofar as one imagines that there is a certain idea of these? Nevertheless, in the past, when this very subject has troubled me, whether or not the very same thing can be affirmed about everything, but thereafter, having, fixed, having been fixed in this opinion, I then run away fleeing in fear of falling at, at that time into some certain abyss of nonsense and utterly perish. But then I reach up from those considerations and again I seriously apply myself to those considerations concerning which we have just now asserted whether such ideas have to be. It might be worth noting, too, okay. I don't know. Okay, what's his fear? Uh, falling into an abyss of nonsense. If, if the same idea doesn't apply to... Yeah, should, I, should we apply to all things? The idea of soul. Mm -hmm. Oh. <coughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Well, you know, in the text that was read, there was the selves is missing it out of the what two second and a half line, where it says, "My text is relatively new, but not new." On the one hand, I do not affirm that these exist in any other way from these which we do indeed also see. Whereas, on the other hand, is it not the height of absurdity, insofar as one imagines that there is a certain idea of selves? Nevertheless, at times, it goes on from there. So I thought we should know that. Everybody reading should know that. Yeah, yes, well. So uh, it just was not in the text read. I no, no, no. Fine. Read it again for us. Um, Start from the beginning. OK. On the one hand, I do not affirm that these exist in any other way from those which we do indeed also see, whereas on the other hand, is it not the height of absurdity or monstrosity, really, if you translate it like with the other one? Insofar as one imagines that there is a certain, and, and one is translating it here idea, and that's certainly okay, but just to hold the text together, you should know it's the same word that's being translated, idea slash form slash species. Mm -hmm. So, if you take idea or if you take class, you should just be aware it's the same word, I guess. Sorry, Pierre. Sure. I once again yeah. muttered and myself into so silence. One of his worries is, can you take all of these ideas of selves uh -huh. as just one idea? All. Mm. That's interesting. Can that can that become an idea? Mm. Wow. Can there be an idea of selves that includes all of these things? That's amazing. If so. Oh. Yeah. There's there's no place itself is not. That's right. That's what it would have been. Mm -hmm. So everything's gonna. Yeah. The idea that thinks itself itself is the illusion. And so he's saying, what about Yeah, he's saying, hey, um, uh, I don't know whether I want to say that. Uh, matter of fact, I kind of run away when I think about it. Um, he also gives what, in what we've read so far, he, Parmenides also gives what might be an interesting clue to all this. Mm -hmm. Because when he speaks of justice and beauty and good, he doesn't speak of them having elements or parts. That's true. However, if 
for the human, proto-human idea of man, he does have parts. He does have elements. And you can also infer everything lower down, hair, mud, and dirt, and all that stuff, is parts or has parts. Uh, it's a, look at it. It's a very good addition, mm -hmm. saying that you have to see behind this the problem of whole and parts. Yeah. And some of the ideas don't have parts, others do. Good point. Good point. Okay. Can we get Parmenides' response? That is because you are still a young man, O Socrates. And philosophy has not, as of yet, received you into her embraces. For in my opinion, when you are received by her, uh, we probably have different translations here, but mine says, you will not dishonor selves or any of these particulars, any of these selves. But now, since you are still young, you give heed to the opinions of men. Um, can you see the difference between Parmenides' view and Socrates' view? Right, we've done this. Um, because now we're going to go further into Parmenides' set of ideas he's going to ask Socrates. But right here, what is, is there any particular issue that's fundamental? Uh, what is Socrates' difficulty? Not saying that there's one self. Pardon? Not saying that there's one self. That's true. Mm -hmm. What does that presuppose he doesn't yet grasp? Parmenides' hypothesis? That's true, of course. <laughs> I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Well, I'm leaving it as wide open, open as I can to get as many answers as I can. How, well, how about he, perhaps he doesn't grasp the fundamental likeness of oneness mm. amongst all of these. Okay. Or, or self 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 uh, and likeness is a fundamental idea. Likeness and oneness, so. both together, so. maybe he okay. doesn't grasp. That was Bradley, I think, was about to jump in. Um, is it that he can't? Uh, he has a problem with <clears throat> self in the realm of the images or in appearance. So, do you recall what Parmenides links as the key point in Socrates' failure? He fails to see what? Come on. What does he say? Socrates, this is your problem. It's that he gives he he listens to the many, and and um, it also well it says philosophy has not received you. When you are received by the self philosophy, you will not dishonor any of these. So it seemed to me that um, another way of saying well, and seemed to me that he has an idea that I that ideas are high and honorable things <coughs> and shouldn't apply to low things. And also that, and perhaps that's because the many would laugh at him if he were to say there are ideas all mm -hmm. the way down mm -hmm. to the lowest level of becoming, which is what Brad was. Also, I, I like that. Anyone else? Well, just uh, Barbara's sentence didn't have that, but um, you will not dishonor any of these selves. So Socrates is um, not seeing that there is selves throughout throughout, and should be affirmed of everything.
Perhaps he does, he's not seeing that the cells at the highest level are all divine, like, like mm -hmm. what he sees inside of him, he's not seeing in everything. Yeah, see, he does, he does tell Socrates, doesn't he? Hey, you know what your problem is? Uh, you cannot accept the idea, finish it, that everything finishes. Has a cell. Everything has a self. Everything, everything has a self. Therefore, Equal to all others. If he, see, that's the idea. Likeness. Now, what keeps him from seeing that? The opinions of man. Like, if you see it, what did you have to do to see it that Socrates wasn't able to see? Mm -hmm. What would you say? I don't have an answer yet. I'm thinking. I have the question. I don't have the answer. Perhaps but my you, you have to have the modeling inside yourself in, of whatever you see outside. If you see yourself as divine, you're going to see everything as divine. That's true, but what terms do you need to describe that? You got, got a good answer. Um, basically, he's, uh, he's looking at the higher realm and the visible realm. Right. And he's not differenti differentiating the two. As mm -hmm. but yeah, he has a problem reconciling the yeah. two. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see, you're quite right. By the way, why does he have that difficulty? What is it that he's not grasping that keeps him from making those connections? The, the one self it's, uh, itself, right? The, that's, this fits, doesn't this fit perfectly with Parmenides' takeoff point, what is the one self? Because it seems like that's what <clears throat> Socrates can't grasp or doesn't understand, and then all these consequences. Yeah? What does he lack that blocks him from saying the truth? You're quite right in what you said. Can you go to the next step? I don't see that. Experience and learning? Pardon me? Experience and learning? Is it, the, is it participation? His, his understand, his view of participation? I'm not understanding. Um, so we're looking at this, and uh, it looks like Parmenides is saying, your problem, young man, is because you are una unable to see that everything is the soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. If that's correct, what is it about his thinking, Socrates' his thinking, that kept him from seeing that? Well, see, um, see, he's showing him the role of the self, as you said, in the world of ideas. He doesn't see it in the everyday world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, then he has a very interesting view, and Parmenides is capturing it. But, um, hmm. is it? Let me risk oh, something. Okay. Hey, is he uh, reflecting the fifth hypothesis? There's no connection between the everyday world and the world of ideas? I think that, yeah, that's one, one yeah. way, but I was just seeing that if he's breaking up, say, justice, beauty, and good in itself, he's separating those, and that's what Socrates Parmenides is pointing out to him, but in what you're doing is that he's seeing that there's a self-justice, self-beauty, self-good. He he doesn't see he doesn't see that there's a self behind all of those selves because yes. he separates them. Yes. What keeps him from seeing that? See, in a way. If Regina has seen it, should 
that means she must have seen something to make that conclusion which Socrates wasn't able to make. Mm -hmm. What is it that brought you to see that? Okay, um, we'll keep going. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll sure, leave that sure. question alone. No problem. <laughs> the logos? A certain way of using the logos, you're quite right. Okay, we Can I just, please. On the dramatic level, yeah. doesn't it look like um, there are there are certain Zeno-esque qualities to Socrates at this point? Like so Zeno wrote his thesis in response to the ridicule of the position of Parmenides, right? The Parmenides hypothesis led to conclusions that the many found laughable. And it looks like Socrates, the same, a similar judgment, not same judgment, it is being made by, of Socrates by Parmenides, who's mm -hmm. saying that he has a fear of the opinions of the multitude, or that he has too much, or he's regarding, not a fear, but um, he is, he, he is giving heed to the, the opinions of men, is the quote. Yes. Right? So it just seems very, it seems there is a certain similarity to the degree that that's true. However, that, of course, that doesn't answer the much better question you asked. No idea. No. I'm still holding on to it, though. Okay. Go further. Ready? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to play a little bit with your, like Barbara says, your great last question. Um, why, why, he, why he can't see that, you know, and Regina can, or we can't. I wanted to answer because maybe because he has not had an experience of the divine personally but then we talked recently about folks who so we've got two good answers I think, I experience the divine and, and logos but we talked recently about people who can have and it's, it's, it's further on in the Parmenides itself where you can take a person through the logos or they can walk down the street and bam, get hit with a brilliant light experience. And lots of people have either of that, and they still don't, they would still stay where Socrates is. Right, because Parmenides later even says, even if you were to take someone who's well versed in ideas and exploring ideas, and took them through all the reasoning that we're going through, it's very likely at the end, he's not going to be convinced of our reasoning. He'll go back to his form of beliefs. Yeah, that's right. So what I want to know is, um, I want to cheat and turn your question back on you and get an answer. What is it that holds people back, even if they've had someone walk them through with a good logos, or even if they've had a divine experience, and they still turn it down and go, nah, nah, it couldn't be. What is it that... Well, there are two parts to your question. The latter part is that they don't have the logos. Yes, if they only have the experience but no logos. No. But the flip can also be true. No. Is See, now the logos will show you the necessity for the conclusion, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you'll be able to accept it. So mm -hmm. You're driven to it, right? You're yeah. driven to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. But it's rather distasteful yeah. in some way. You can't accept it. Yeah. So are the two together then, yeah. are the two together yeah. uh, sufficient to bring a person to that? Yeah, okay. If you've had a personal experience of the divine and someone walks you through the logos, is that sufficient to move you? Or are there people who would have both of those and still remain? Well... They just need a cup of coffee. If you had both, it would, it would make it possible. Very clearly, it would make it possible. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? No. Hey, Pierre. Okay, look. Pierre, Let real quick. It says right there that, that uh, uh, philosophy has not yet received you. So he's obviously still, he's still participating in the realm of opinions. He's not up there in philosophy where wisdom, truth, and understanding is. He hasn't seen, he hasn't, I don't know if somebody has to walk him through it. He just, he's, he's participating in opinion versus truth mm -hmm. and understanding. Look, um, 
got all this stuff. Well, that. You know, I, I, I was thinking of what Brad, what Brad said, and the idea of, as I mentioned earlier, that the idea of separate and apart is repeated several times here. Do you not think that these are separate ideas apart, set apart, that there are certain ideas or separate no. uh, apart from, and no. Socrates agrees to those, he's agreeing and he's saying that there are ideas there are uh, w of which we participate, we're, we're set apart. So he doesn't see the self as a commonness through them all, as well as what Brad mentioned, the one self. Like, he, he couldn't go there at this point because of that idea of separateness. Well, that, you know. Uh, oh, well, anyway. Yeah. That's, that's another view that certainly so. Let me suggest something. Let's go. Um, In the Republic 517 to 518, Plato describes what he calls the idea of the good. as now in that experience uh, it is not a concept. This word is not equivalent to concepts. Right? That word means to behold it. So if you are beholding this, why is that so darn important? in the Republic. He said, look here, you have to have this experience or you can't become the philosopher king. Why? Because if you experience it, then you'll see that inherent in this experience You can uh, conclude it is the idea of the most uh, highest, it's the, it's the highest expression of goodness. Hey, in that experience, other people can say, hey, you know what that is? That's pure mind. Because this experience comes suddenly. It's a sudden experience. And the person recognizes, oh my God, that's the very nature of pure mind because it's in some, somehow accessing a higher kind of seeing, which some people call intuition, on a higher level. Now look here. Inherent in this is that people also are able to grasp that essential to this experience is also justice. Right? Hey, 
it's the most beautiful thing possible to imagine. Nothing can be said to be more beautiful. Now look here. Someone else comes along and says, hey, I got news for you. This is the self seeing the self. Therefore, if that's true, you can put next to each one of these ideas right, the idea of self. Because it's not that these are just different aspects of the self seeing the self, or different aspects of this most beautiful, brilliant light of being. So the question now is, hey, this raises a lot of questions, you see. Um, and now, in certain ways, you can talk about this as separate from this. Another way, you can't. You can also say they share, hey, they all share something in common, don't they? So therefore, there's a likeness among them. Oh, that's another idea up here that equally must be said to be self-likeness. So now, you see, These are, these are aspects of that experience. And these people in the Hellenic world can freely use this language and they're trying to make sense of it. And especially the great questions which are, hey, um, are these separate and distinct? Yes, they are. No, they're not. They're also, they have a commonness among them. So they're both separate by themselves and they're also interconnected. And, and when they're interconnected, they show a likeness among all things. Therefore, the idea of likeness is above all of them. Therefore, he's going to use the idea of likeness and unlikeness as major ideas in this work. So, look what he's asking. Among these great ideas, can you say there's an ideal self, pardon me, an ideal person on two levels? Is there the idea of man as an archetype And that means ideally. And or can you also and can you also say, wait a minute, um, is there a fundamental idea of man that's a paradigm? And all people are expressions of this one idea. Therefore, it's the progenitor of all mankind, one idea of man. There can be either one of these or both. Sorry, uh, how do those two differ? Yeah. Well, this is not a signing. Uh, this is a paradigm. The paradigm is that it's, there can be a source that can be generated from it that account for all things similar to itself. Not making other, any other claim for it. Hold it. Now we're adding, it's gonna be an idea of man as the most ideal 
Right. Uh, archetypally, it, it, it stands as um, like of all mankind is wiped off by the grace of Trump. Uh, there might still be the idea of man that exists that can generate a new class of mankind in, on some other planet, considering that he may reduce our earth to ashes. Right? So, if that idea exists, it can exist as an ideal, and therefore its manifestation on Earth or on any other planets are expressions of that ideal archetypal form. Mm. They can be combined or they can be separated. This would be the study of genetics. This could be the study of the destiny of man. That the lower one is only in the world of becoming? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay, All right. now we go back into Papa Parmenides. Um, wait a minute, time for a break. Yes. Uh, I, just want, I just want to quickly remind you, Pierre, and everybody, Nancy said she's coming at 10.30. That's in an hour and 10 minutes from now. So if you wanted to switch to dreams, if there are any, now would be a good time. Okay. We could probably fit in two. Maybe. Anybody with dreams, put them up forward. Good. How's your world? Good. How are you? Still there? Yeah. I like to hear that. We left out of that model. And that is what is always true. Anyone who experiences that brilliant light of being, <coughs> it naturally follows that it awakens a love. The what? It, it awakens, awakens love. love. Mm -hmm. And that's why philosophy is called, right? The love. love and wisdom. And wisdom is that experience. Therefore, they love it because it's the most beautiful experience one can have. So we uh, mm. have to put that in. Okay. How about questions? What are the... I, to, 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 I got a notice from Barbara, and Barbara said, why don't you ask people whatever is in their mind they want to ask, and she'd like to get a shot at answering them. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a minute. And then she said, so if I have any trouble answering it, I know who to call upon. Hmm. Eldar. <laughs> there are a lot of good people. Eldar is certainly one. Belinda. Okay. Her cohorts there. Back row. Bradley. What are the early Buddhist uh, uh, sutras that you referenced? Okay. I'll, I'll write it down in a few minutes. Um, how many of you are familiar with uh, On the web, there is this. And our old friend, Todd, has sent in a nice uh, six-page comment on uh, what we're doing on the Parmenides. And in it, he quotes a Buddhist scripture where they are talking about the idea of the self. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So you can get it yourself by just checking on that. Yeah. And seeing the title of it. Cool. So it's an interesting website. And uh, he did them six pages. OK. Another one. OK, let's have a cup of coffee and sit around and do some talking. Right? Mm -hmm. And Barbara is very relieved that she has, doesn't have to do anything yes. unusual. Yes. All right. <laughs>